This piece is going to have kind of an unusual time signature. I'm using 13.8, which will give it kind of an off balance or uneven feel. Now with 13.8, our measure is going to consist of 13 eighth notes. And we're gonna break that down into three groups of three and two groups of two. And each of those groups is gonna function kind of as its own beat. So we're sort of gonna have three slightly longer beats and then two slightly shorter beats. So I'm gonna start off with just some light percussion here to kind of establish those uneven beats. And then I'm going to use some bigger drums and some other percussion to signal that something's coming and then to kind of accent the downbeat. Next, I'm going to add kind of a low drone to go underneath that. Now, this is a combination of two different sounds. I've got some low brass, and then I also have this sound that I created by bowing an acoustic guitar and then digitally pitching it down. And now with the percussion again. So let's add a melody in here now. And this is going to be played by two cellos in octaves, which I find has kind of a harsh, but still really pretty sound that I think will work really well here. And I've also added another sound on the top there which is also a cello sound, but it's being played sol ponticello or close to the bridge. And then I have a low pass filter on there as well. So moving on from there, the basses and the cellos are gonna take over the drone. And we're gonna keep doing pretty much the same thing with the percussion. We're just gonna bring the snare drum in to kind of help out with those accents. Now I wanna add some rhythmic energy here. So I'm gonna bring the violas in and have them do kind of the same rhythmic thing that we've been doing with the percussion. And then after two bars of that, we're gonna, as we change chords, we're gonna move that into the second violins and the first cellos while the second cellos keep playing the drone. And now I'm going to use the clarinets to just add a little bit of color. And I don't want them to stand out at all. They're just there to support what the violas are doing and kind of strengthen those accents. And they're going to be playing this really dissonant minor second here, which by itself would sound awful. But in context, it just kind of adds a little bit of flavor to it. And then with the chord change, I'm going to add the flutes in up an octave from the lower note. continue our melody here with the horns. And as we get into this next phrase, I want to keep kind of ramping up the energy. So we're going to add in some low brass here. To keep that same rhythmic thing going with the strings and the woodwinds but then we're also going to use the trombones and the oboes to kind of bring out certain parts of that and now we're going to bring those two cellos back in playing basically the same melody but the second half is going to be a little different might notice that the melody is landing on a non-chord tone here. Our chord is C minor and the melody is on an F, which definitely clashes a little bit. But in this context, I actually really like that. In fact, I want to lean into it and add in some other notes to really emphasize that dissonance. 
And now we're going to keep the melody going in the cellos as we go to a chord with some more tension here. And then we're going to land back on our tonic or our one chord. And we're going to add in some bigger percussion over the top of this. Then the French horns are going to take the melody here for a second. And then we're going to have a response to that melody in the trombones along with the first cellos and the bassoons. And now I'll finish that off with this fast moving line in the high strings along with some woodwinds. And I'll add sort of a lighter version of that in the two bars before building up to it. Now I've just got two more bars here before I want to transition into this legato section. And to do that I want to thin things out and then quickly build it back up. So we'll start here with just the low strings and percussion. And now I'm going to add the horns and trombones on top of that. And they're going to do this kind of double suspension thing where rather than playing the third of the chord initially, they're going to play the second and the fourth and then both resolve down. And then we'll add some woodwinds on top to brighten it and fill out the chord a little bit. And I'm also going to use that bowed guitar sound from before. And I'll automate the filter on that to make it swell and then kind of have this rhythmic stutter thing at the end. And now we're getting into that legato section. So here's the melody. And here's a counter melody in the horns. And after two bars, I'm adding in the first cellos to double that. And now we'll bring in the basses and the second cellos along with that bowed guitar sound. So next I'll add percussion in here. And I still want this to sound big, but it's not going to be nearly as busy because I want to kind of release the tension a little bit, but at the same time, bring in a different emotion. Now I've added this little second violin thing in between the first and the violas and this trombone counter melody. And then at the end of this melody, I'm going to have everything play this loud staccato thing to pull us into what's happening next. And now I'm almost to the point that I want to repeat most of what we've done so far, but I need something to sort of take us back there. And I want this transition to still be big, but I also need it to sort of bring things back down. So I had this idea for a descending line that kind of starts up high and then as it moves down I add layers on top of it and as each of those moves down I just keep stacking and then once that's built up everything's just going to quickly move down together and kind of take us back to where we started. So now I'll just quickly show you how that all comes together. <laughs>
right, so now we're pretty much back where we started, and I'm just going to copy and drag most of what we did over so we have a repeat. And here's how that transition sounds once we've done that. Now when we get back to that legato section, I'm just going to bring the second violins in earlier to harmonize with the melody. Now from here I'm going to change it up. I'm just going to do a quick little one bar transition here. Now as I start this new section, I'm going to really thin out the texture for just a second. So here's our melody. And we'll add in the basses. here. Now as the horns come in, they're going to start off playing this supportive harmony part, but then as it builds, they're going to move into the melody up an octave from the cellos. some small percussion to help it build here. Now shortly after the horns enter, I'm going to bring in the violas on the melody, again up an octave from the cellos. second half of this we're going to bring in the second cellos and the low brass to support the basses. And some bigger drums again. second violins at the end here on the melody just up another octave and now I want to fill out my chords a little bit so I'm gonna bring in this counter melody thing with the trombones and the clarinets and then the oboes up an octave Finally, we'll have the first violins and the flutes join in on the melody up another octave. And 
and now I'm going to move on to the ending of the piece. So I'll have these two chords we heard before. And on that last note, I'm going to do a big swell and bring everything back in for a big dramatic finish. So I'll just quickly show you how that all comes together. So that's the end of it. Now I just need to clean up the MIDI and then mix and master it. And I may show that process in another video, but for now, we'll just skip to the end result. <laughs>